Welcome to It's Not Over with Dr. Dan Farrell. I'm Josh, and uh, we are going to be continuing our series this week on Roman Catholics Need to Come Home. How are you doing today, Dr. Farrell? I am doing great. You know, uh, by the way, when we finish this program, offer people this right here, the list of heresies. Okay. If they'll write in, we'll send this to them for free. Okay. All right. It'd be nice if they could send five bucks, you know, to help postage, but... Um, List of heresies and human traditions adopted and perpetuated by the Roman Catholic Church in the course of 1,600 years. Uh, this was compiled by Reverend Stephen Testa. And uh, so we've spruced this up, and it gives you chronologically how the Catholic Church adopted various doctrines. Hmm. Okay? Um, let me give you an example. Uh, 310, prayers for the dead. By 310, prayers for the dead and the sign of the cross. Um, you know, that's about 250 years after the early church. Yeah. Uh, by 320, wax candles was introduced by way of a tradition. we got to use wax candles. Well, I don't know. I like paraffin. Um, <laughs> veneration of angels and dead saints by 375. Mm. The mass as a daily celebration adopted by 394. The worship of Mary as the mother of God, the council of Ephesus, which was 431. Uh, let's see. Priests began to dress differently than did the laity by 500. The doctrine of purgatory was first established by Gregory 593. Wait, so before 593, where was purgatory then? Um, because it just kind of popped up in 593, right? No, I give you the answer. <laughs> yeah, <that's> um, <laughs> yeah. The Latin language being used. Uh, uh, explicitly, even though people didn't understand it. Now, even mm -hmm. though the Bible says don't speak in, by an unknown tongue, I'd rather speak five words, be understood, and, you know, 10,000, 5,000 not be understood. 600 AD. Um, the Bible teaches that we pray to God alone in the primitive church. Never were prayers directed to Mary or dead saints. It's practiced again in the Roman Catholic Church by 600. Mm -hmm. The papacy is of pagan origin. The title Pope was universal. Bishop was in, in vogue, now adopted by 610. It was used before then, but it was adopted. And then um, kissing of the Pope's feet by 709. Wow. Baptism of the bells, you know, because the churches would use bells. But what can, is that? Well, that means that the bell, you can't call people to church unless the Pope sanctions the church, and, the, and so he baptizes the bell. Of course, the problem was they get rusty and wouldn't be as loud. Uh, I just made that up. Um, the worship of the cross and images and relics by 788. Canonization of dead saints like Mother Teresa and, you know, and like, you know, um, Saint Daffy Duck and Saint Porky Pig, all those things, was by 995. Right. The Mass uh, developed gradually as a sacrifice. Attendance was obligatory by the 11th century. Celibacy of the priesthood by 1079. So... Hmm. Man, can you imagine that? I mean, can you imagine you enter the priesthood seven, 1080 and you're right. told you can't have a girlfriend, you know? But, of course, they did. Right. Um, uh, uh, the Rosary by 1090. The Inquisition then started by 1184, which killed wow. a lot of people. I didn't know it started that early. Yeah. 1184, the Adoration of the Wafer. That's the little Jesus cookie by 1220. Uh, the scapular, the, you wear that against your skin, and uh, that's going to scare off, you know, evil spirits and so on. And uh, has a picture of the Virgin Mary on it and whatever, because they know what she looked like. There was there was actually Kodak cameras mm -hmm. back in those days. Um, the doctrine of purgatory was proclaimed as a dogma by faith by the Council of Florence. So now it's it's definitely doctrine by 1439. The Doctrine of the Seven Sacraments by 1439. Ave Maria, because that was, uh, of course, uh, this is now universal. Uh, you have to worship Mary by 1508. Council of, Ni uh, Can Council of Trent, held in 1545, declared a tradition uh, was equal to biblical authority. Right. The Apocryphal Books were declared canonical by 1546. Papal Infallibility. 1870. That's that's like the most ridiculous. Thing so if he ever. says, "Hey, I'd like to have a cookie," that's the word of God. Right. If as long as he's sitting on the chair, the ex cathedra. Right. And then of course, immaculate conception of Mary. She was born without sin. 1854. Mm. Uh, Pope Pius X in the year 1907 condemned together with modernism all the discoveries of modern science, which are not approved by the Church. Of course, that's that's the job of a preacher mm -hmm. is to go around condemning. Uh, scientific discoveries. And then, uh, of course, by 
by the year 1930, Pope Pius XI condemned the public schools. Now, that might yeah. be one thing we could maybe, mm. <laughs> yeah. you know, maybe he's a little, maybe he wasn't drunk when he did that, so he was sober. Uh, and then, of course, in the year 1931, the same Pope, Pius XI, reaffirmed the doctrine that Mary is the mother of God. Uh, well. So reaffirmed it. Uh, based on the Council of Ephesus, which I've been there. I've seen the plaque at, there at, the, at Ephesus. Yeah. And then the year 1950, the last dogma was proclaimed by Pope Pius XII, the Assumption of the Virgin Mary by 1950. Now, the Assumption means she didn't die. She just right. she ascended into heaven. Now, let's, this is very interesting. So you can see then, our listening audience that and viewing audience, that the Catholic Church is an evolution. Mm-hmm. And they, they developed these doctrines, and of course, one of the most, uh, I would call, almost like a, a parent doctrine is this idea that tradition is equal to biblical authority. Right. Because once you do that, man, I mean, the, the horse is out of the barn. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter. Right. I mean, you can just, whatever you say goes. Yeah, you just make it up as you as you go, and that's exactly what that's right. we see on the pamphlet. All right, so you want to keep that in your Bible? I do. That's, that's a good thing that's to have. Good. All right, now listen to these verses here. In Matthew 23, it says this. Verse 7, and greetings in the markets, and to be called of men, Rabbi, Rabbi, but be not ye called Rabbi, for one is your master, even Christ, and all ye are brethren, and call no man your father upon the earth. Now, he didn't say, don't call your dad your father. He said, call no man. In other words, in a religious connotation, for one is your father, which is in heaven, neither be ye called masters, for one is your master, even Christ, but he that is greatest among you. Uh, you shall be your servant. Now, what we have here is interesting. Verse 9, call no man father. Hmm. Now, I know it's not a a damning doctrine, but a heresy, but why is it that Roman Catholics can read that verse and say, of course, again, now don't insult my intelligence that I shouldn't call my dad father. Typically, I did call him dad, but that's not talking, it's not talking about a familial relationship it's talking about in a religious connotation context don't call a man a father because you have one spiritual father that's your heavenly father right what is so hard about that it's like the catholic church and the priest read the bible said hey let's find some more things that we can disagree with the bible on Mm. you know i mean really i mean you would have thought if the Catholic priests and theologians would have had any intelligence, they would have said, oh, we better not do this because that's pretty plain there. Mm-hmm. And if we call each other father, that's pretty plain. And, of course, they can say, well, um, Paul made a comment. He goes, have you not many fathers? But he he didn't say that he wanted to be called father. Right. He said, I'm like a father to you. I'm a I'm a tutor. I'm a mentor. I'm like a father. But where do you read in the in the Pauline epistles that they called, Hey Father Paul? Where do you read that? I'm no help me out. It's not in there. I'll see it. It's not in there. I don't get it. Hmm. Now that that is not as serious as the mass. Right. The mass is blasphemy. So let's go there. Hebrews chapter 10. Read for us verse 10. By the way, this is not in the Catholic Bible, which is rather coinky dinky. What? Uh, Matthew or Hebrews 10.10 10 is not in the Catholic Bible. All right, read it. By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. That once for all is lifted. Wow. And the due and the reams, and I, I, I haven't read the Latin Vulgate for a long time, but I'm guessing the Latin Vulgate. Now, the reason why is because, you see, they celebrate the Mass every weekend, whether Saturday night, Sunday morning, and they masticate, they mm-hmm. crucify Jesus Christ, mm-hmm. and you crunch him after the priest blesses the Holy Eucharist, the host. You take the little cookie, you put it in your mouth, and you crunch it up, and that's how you get Christ in you, transubstantiation. Mm -hmm. Now, some Catholics say, well, I don't really believe that. Well, I I don't care what some individual Catholic says. That's what the church teaches. Right. Anybody that denies that is either ignorant or they're dishonest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's like those Mormon missionaries that say, well, we don't believe Satan is uh, really the brother of Jesus. Well, you're either ignorant or you're a liar. Right. Because that's what the Mormon church teaches. That's right. That's their official doctrine. That is their official doctrine. All right. So this this scripture here says that Christ offered himself up, his body, once for all. That I think that might mean what he uh, was saying there. It is finished. It might be. Yep. It could be. It's finished. It's once for all. Yep. 
And Paul, if you believe he's the writer of Hebrews, I do, he reiterates that once for all. You can't duplicate it. Mm-mm. Christ is not going to die again. Mm-mm. In fact, it says that in chapter 10 and verse 26. For if we sin willfully after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. Right. He's the only one. He's the only one. God's not going to, he doesn't have two sons, but if he did, he wouldn't, he's not going to sacrifice another one. Mm. All right. So the Catholic church with their doctrine of the mass is heresy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's blasphemy. Mm -hmm. And to put Jesus Christ to an open shame and to hold up the holy crucifix of a naked Christ on the cross and then, you know, behold your God. You know, Eke Theos. Which they're talking to the cookie, right? Yes. What and then that? the priest does the priestly magical things, and he blesses the cookie, and then people take that and they eat it. I mm-hmm. guess they put it in a sunburst, too. They put it in a sunburst, and they hold that thing up. I've been in the Catholic ter- services and seen it. Now, I don't necessarily would call the Roman Catholics. I think Roman Catholics do things rather robotically. You know, t- stand up, you know, genuflects, and, and then sit down, stand up, sit down, stand up. And they, they go through all this ritual, and they do it rather mind-numbing. But really, that's blasphemy. Mm-hmm. It is blasphemy. Mm-hmm. It's horrible. And so for them to do this, and then to read the Scripture and not understand that Christ died on the cross, he shed his blood, he did it once for all, it's finished. And if you'll put your faith in the finished work of Christ, now your salvation is finished, and you don't have to keep eating a cookie every weekend. You see? Right. So, and when Christ said in John, what is that, in John, is um, that John chapter 12? When Christ said, listen to this, when Christ was talking about take this and eat this, for this is my body, now let's see here, let me find it. He says, the words that I speak unto you are spirit, right? Mm-hmm. They're spirit, They're not, not flesh. The, the, the flesh profiteth nothing. Okay, I think it's in John chapter, let me see. John chapter 8, where the great teaching where Christ says, take this bread and eat it, eat all of it. The Roman Catholics say, well, see, we're supposed to eat Christ, but you're not to eat him physically. You're to eat him spiritually. That's right. See, by faith, not, not, it's not cannibalism. Mm -mm. It's your, you're to digest Christ by faith. We'll talk about this more tomorrow. Okay. We thank you for listening, and we want to encourage you to uh, check out some of our older programs at sermonaudio.com slash it's not over. And there you're able to download any of the uh, shows that have been done in the past if you've missed any. And we've got the entire uh, archive there on Sermon Audio. And then also be sure to visit us on YouTube. You can go to YouTube and browse by channel and search for our YouTube channel, also conveniently called It's Not Over. And if you look for us, we're probably about fourth or fifth down the list on the channel list. And uh, we'd like to also encourage you to go to morningstarnetwork.org where if you feel uh, led, you can donate to this ministry. And uh, if uh, you donate uh, $50 or more, We'd love to send your way Pastor's latest book, Soul Winning, Why So Important. And we can also get you that uh, little paper uh, if you want to send in a request that has that list of heresies Mm -hmm. that uh, we read Mm -hmm. earlier. And then October 4th is Baptist Prayer Day. And so if you'd like to join with us in praying for revival in America and and also for uh, young men to be called to preach, we would love to have you join us in that. Here's Pastor Farrell to close. When Josh and I were trying to find that verse, we found it. It is in John chapter 6, when Jesus said, take this, this bread and eat it. It's my flesh and drink my blood. Then he followed up in verse 63, it is a spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. John 6, 63. But see, this is the point. When Roman Catholics teach their heresy, they skew it. They take it out of context. My friend, let's get back to the Bible. Let's get back to a scriptural church.